Hey everybody, it's Emily, the Crazy Worm Lady. For a while I've been promising a comparison video between the four different types of worms that I raise. So my red wigglers here were not too happy to be washed off for a photo shoot, but um, I did clean them off. And I wanted to point out a few of the key signs that you have red wigglers. For one, this bulging clitellum. In an, a mature adult red wiggler, when they're not extended out, you can see that clitellum bulging. They also call the clitellum a saddle. Another thing is you can see down here, they have this yellowish colored tail. Um, they're slower moving than the blue worms, which I also have. Um, but they're considered to be the best beginner worm because they're extremely forgiving. Um, they're not as flighty as the blues can be when it comes to like changes in the barometric pressure. So they're kind of a good all around worm. They can eat, um, in my experience, up to their weight a week. Um, so a pound of red wigglers could potentially eat a pound of food a week. They might be able to do more, but um, some numbers that they put out there are not completely accurate. Um, it's really under ideal conditions and none of us have the absolute ideal conditions in our home setup. So these are red wigglers. Let me go get my blues. Okay, so here are my blue worms. Um, as you can see, they are a little bit feistier. They move a lot faster. When you pick up a ball of worms, like I get sometimes, these guys are just like moving at light speed. Um, as you can see the way they crawl, this guy over on the left hand side is showing you they kind of pull their body behind them, kind of like an inchworm. Um, but the blues are great composters. They're pretty much on par with the red wigglers. Um, I'm told they can actually be much better than the red wigglers um, under ideal conditions. But a lot of people are disappointed because they are really temperamental to barometric pressure changes. So if a storm is coming, these guys are known for um, seeking higher ground and climbing up the sides of your bin. Um, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong in the bin necessarily. It's usually just them following kind of what nature is making them think they need to do, which is get to higher ground. So um, as you can see, a few of these guys with their clitellums, one guy just climbed under here, they're flushed with the body. Um, the clitellum is harder to identify because it's light in color, but it doesn't bulge. So you have to kind of look for it. You can see it on that guy right there. It's flush with the body. Even when he's kind of scrunched up, it's not bulging out. It's flush. So those are the blue worms. Let me get the European night crawlers. Okay, so these are the European night crawlers. As you can probably notice right away, they are substantially longer than the red wigglers or the blue worms. Um, let's see if I can get this guy. They have a more noticeable clitellum than the blue worms do. But honestly, it's their striping and their shorter, the shorter distance from here into the clitellum that is a, a telltale sign of them, but the, the striping is always pretty obvious too with these guys. You can see that striping. These guys are great composters. I personally have struggled with them a little bit. I find these guys flightier than the blue worms. And if you disturb their bin, um, they'll climb the sides on you for a while if you don't um, keep the, the lid off and the light on for a little while. Um, I'm kind of learning as I go. These guys also have a, a yellowish tail here. They're slower reproducers than the red and the blue worms. Um, and they tend to slow down more in the winter months. This is um, primarily from my exper personal experience. But um, they're a great fishing worm. They're very kind of meaty and thick. And if you give them enough room uh, in your system, they can grow, gosh, to about six inches or so. I've seen them um, and get real, real fat for you. So if you have a side hobby of liking to fish, these are excellent fishing worms. 
so you can have kind of a dual purpose out of your worms. So finally, I will get our African night crawlers. Okay, so these are the African night crawlers. These are by far the most voracious eaters out of any of the worms that I have. Um, they can get to be extremely long. Um, if given enough space, I've seen them stretch out as far as a foot, and that's not even an exaggeration. Um, they are just incredible that way. They have this darker color to them, and in the, the right light, you can see um, iridesc iridescent purple sheen when, um, when they're moving. I don't know. I don't think this light is going to give us that. But um, I'm sure if you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen that sheen that they get. Um, these guys reproduce like crazy. Um, I just harvested some of these guys and hundreds of cocoons. I mean, absolutely hundreds of cocoons. Um, they're not really recommended as a beginner worm simply because um, they are from a tropical climate. So they definitely need a climate controlled environment that's never going to get too cold or they're just not going to produce for you. Um, but also they require a lot of maintenance. And by maintenance, I just mean that they need to have a lot of bedding swapped out frequently. Um, they eat a whole lot. I had started with a pound of these guys and they can easily consume three pounds of food a week um, without any problem whatsoever. Um, I find that these guys prefer um, carbon rich material, so like the bedding sources, sometimes even more than they like the um, foods that you give them, although they certainly do eat that as well. But these guys can just be a little bit tricky to figure out at first, and they also can be a little bit flighty and climb with barometric pressure changes. Um, most of the things I'm sharing with you are strictly observational or from reading about these guys. I am by no means a professional, um, but I thought I would give you this chance to take a look at these guys. Their clotellums are harder to identify just because of their darker color. Um, but when they're ready to lay a cocoon, it does bulge out on them. But um, unless you want to get super scientific and, you know, kind of count the ridges down to where their clitellum is, sometimes it can be hard to identify one worm from another. They're, um, you know, especially the baby worms. Um, I struggle to tell the difference between species with the baby worms. I mean, I'd find it impossible. Um, but there are great resources out there if you really want to identify um, a specific type of worm. But these are just my observations and a little bit of what I've learned along the way. So I just thought I would bring you this um, little side-by-side -side comparison of all the guys that I raise. And you can feel free to drop any of your comments or questions below. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I'd be happy to try to point you in the right direction with any of your questions. But um, I did have this request for this video, so hopefully this was of some help for you guys. So drop your comments below, like this video, subscribe if you'd like some more content from me, and check out my different playlists so you can take a look at all of my different worms in action.